Good morning guys, so I'm back here in London visiting the best attractions so I'm starting off at the British Museum which is right next to me it opens at 10 o'clock and you need to book in advance it's free to enter like most of the museums here in London but before I enter let me tell you some quick facts and then let's explore the best artifacts in the British Museum also I want to thank everyone for supporting my channel and for my drone viewers I didn't forget you believe me the weather in UK it's seriously bad but I will get into making some tutorials and some nice idea with the drone soon Now I'm entering the British Museum. As I mentioned, I will tell you some quick facts. The objects here, only 1% is presented to the public, which is 800,000 objects. And it has about 8 million, if I'm not mistaken. The British Museum, it's one of the oldest and largest in the world. And there are some controversies regarding the artifacts of this museum because it has so many well stolen artifacts that have been shown here at the British Museum. When you enter in the main entrance, you will come across the Great Hall, completed in 2000, and is the largest covered square in Europe. And it takes about two weeks to clean this place. And one last fact regarding the British Museum: in 1972. There was an exhibition of King's Tooth, which was the most successful in British history, which attracted 1.7 million visitors. I found and searched some important artifacts that you don't want to miss, which is about 20 of them. There is no way I could show you everything, but I will try my best to show you the most of it. Let's begin firstly from one of the most important artifacts in the museum, which is the Rosetta Stone. This is the Rosetta Stone, which you could find it in the ground floor at room 4. It's the key that unlocked the hieroglyphic language of ancient Egypt. It's made from granite and it weighs around 760 kilos. From the Rosetta Stone, which is here, we start going right and we'll come across one of the highlights of the artifacts that I wanted to show you which is the King Ramses II and this was being retrieved from the Remesium in Egypt I've been there, it's a really nice place but the good thing in this museum is you got a lot of right things to explain you what are you looking for because in Egypt, I didn't have that privilege, but still, it was amazing, and yeah, let's continue. Circle and exit the room 9, which was the Assyrian. On the right, you got the Greek and Roman sculptures here we got the crouching venus and unfortunately the greek marbles it's closed and we will not be able to see it which was also one of the highlights that i wanted to show you next to the crouching venus on the left we got the assyria corsabat which you can see two huge nice sculptures which was a pair of human headed wing pools which was stood originally at one of the gates of the citadel as magic guardians against misfortune and let's move on So in this room, you will find the Assyrian lion hunt reliefs. It was a royal lion hunt from the north palace of Nineveh during the reign of Ashurbanipal, the last great Assyrian king, which is widely regarded as a supreme 
masterpieces of Assyria. This is some massive cave. So this is the head of Amenhotep the third and his hand. I think he is missing some parts of his body. And we are back to Rosetta Stone. We done a circle and now I will be showing you where to go next. So exiting the Rosetta Stone area, you go in a circle and we will come across this room. But before we enter this room, I will go and see those columns there. So here you got some cafes if you want to sit and relax. And now I'm entering into room one, the enlightenment. And here, what you want to look for, it's for the Sloan Astrolab here. Which is the earliest and largest English Astrolab to have survived from Middle Ages. And shows the knowledge of Arabic astronomy. This one, which is the Holy Throne Reliquary, and it originated from France around 1400 years. So, passing from room one, you went here to room 27, which is the Mexico section. And you got some nice artifacts here but the most importantly it's the Aztec serpent which is on the entrance on the right which I will change now to my mobile so you can see it better so this is the Aztec serpent which was created to the now called Mexico Coming in room 24, you will see this sculpture, which is the Hoa Hakanainai, and it's the finest example of the Eastern Island sculptures. So now moving on, which I think is the room 25, and that is downstairs, but we will see what works best, and I will see you in a bit. Entering room 25, which was downstairs, we are looking for the life head and let's see if we find it. We come also across to the tree of life. And this is the head of the King Oni from Nigeria. From that room, we got the lift and came to level three, which we will continue exploring the artifacts. Also, I wanted to see in the room 21, the mausoleum artifacts which is unfortunately also closed so let's see where we start so we start from the room 56 which is mesopotamia and we're looking for the royal game which i think is this one So from room 56, we enter in, in the room 63, which is quite busy and for a good reason, it's the Egyptian and death 
afterlife mummies and also the Egyptian funerary archaeology. So in this room, we are looking for the mummy of Katepat, I think I said correctly. And yeah, it's a really interesting area. A lot of mummies, but I saw the best of it in Egypt. So for me, it's not that impressive, but still it's a nice area to come and look for it. So yeah, let's move on. So we found the mummy of Hadebet, which is this one. And for some reason, this was one of the mummies that I found you need to see. From room 63, I'm going to room 65, and now it got more busier. And also, it's been about three hours so far that I'm in the museum. So. In the room 65, we're looking for the Sphinx of Taharpa, I think it's called, which maybe it's this one. Yeah, I think it's this one. Instead, we got some Egyptian artifacts here. We are in the room 52, which is the ancient Iran, and here you could find the Oxus treasure which unfortunately I will show you something they are missing actually they've been borrowed to a different museum and it looks like that similar but it's not here so here is the Oxu treasure with the double-headed griffin that is missing and also another object which I will show you now because when you come to British Museum try find them because it's really important artifact which is this it's the gold chariot from the oxus treasure so yeah pretty unlucky visiting the british museum three of those things that i wanted to see they are not in display but that's fine still i'm happy that i came and see these beautiful artifacts and learn a lot about the history and yeah so let's move on so i'm just now walking towards the room 41 and then we will move towards room 40 and 39 entering room 41 which is the sudan ho in europe the important artifact here it's this mask which is the sudan ho ship Burial and is believed to belong to Anglo-Saxon king dating back to 7th century and perhaps the most important archaeological discovery ever made in Britain. The mouth and eyebrows formed like a flying beast and here also you got a replica of how it used to look which is quite fascinating. Entering the room 40 here you could find one of the most famous pieces of chess in the world made in the 12th century and discovered buried in sand of the Scottish island in 1831. It's called Louis Chessman. And in room 39, we call the Mechanical Galileo, constructed in 1585 in Germany. And when it was moving and walking, it could go forward, it could get smoke from the cannons, and I guess it should be really impressive. So here is the evolution of the watches, starting from 15th century, and it goes up to the present really impressive watches finishing from the clock room which was the room 39 you come to room 36 which you will get 
this iconic view of the glass in the Great Hall. So I've got one more artifact left, which is the samurai in the top floor. And after that, we take some pictures in the area and then move on and go and explore another museum, which also it's one of the top museum in the world, which is the National History Museum. So on level five, in the room 92, you got the area of the ancient Japan. which basically we are looking for the samurai and after that we are done. And here is the samurai armor which was produced for a member of a Mori family which were a samurai lord in the western Japan. Now that I'm done with the British Museum and I saw some artifacts, it's time to take some pictures. I got about 20 minutes before my time slot of the National History Museum. So it took me about four hours and to be honest, I was sprinting to see the artifacts that are already written down. So for someone that doesn't know what to see, it would take them way much longer. I didn't even have a break or stop. I was just going around and this place is huge and it took me four hours which I, without even realizing. So just be aware, bring some drinks, they got some cafes and restaurants here if you want to have a break. So yeah, that's it from the British Museum. It was really interesting and I definitely recommend to come and see this place out. This is it from me and I will see you later on.